Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. Welcome to another edition of the Match of the Gathering Market Watch. A lot to talk about again this week. For the first time, we got to see Pioneer played on a big stage at the Star City Games Invitational. Obviously, there are some card price trends tied into that. And there's a whole lot of other things going on, too. Bannings happened this week. We'll talk about how the entire secondary market reacted to everything that's been going on. Quickly, though, before we get into it, just a fast reminder, if you go over to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code, save yourself a little cash, perhaps, and also support the channel. That's always appreciated, but without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin, as we always do, with Standard and the top six Standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Number six, Vivian Arcbow Ranger goes down 89 cents to 18.55. Okay, so this is a great card. It's been hot ever since Mythic Championship number five. But you have to look at what happened on Monday to kind of figure out what exactly is going on with the price here. Not only did Oko get banned in Standard, but also Once Upon a Time and Veil of Summer. So Green took a huge nerf. Because of that, this card softens up a little bit. With that being said, it's still seeing a little Standard play. And in Pioneer, you're going to find this in Mono Green Devotion decks, which of course have been nerfed too recently and hardened scales. Number five, Varaska Golgari Queen goes down to $1.03 to 1849, another card that is soft due to the bannings that occurred this week. Without Oko in the standard format, this card just isn't as critical as it was a few days ago. It will still see standard play. As a matter of fact, many of the Jund Aristocrats decks are running it right now, and that deck has a lot of buzz going into this new standard meta without the cards that we mentioned a few moments ago. So, can it put up the results? Time will tell, but at least this week it is a pretty popular build. Also, this does see modern play still, and a little bit of legacy play as well. Number four is Leyline of the Void. Two copies here, Magic 2011 down 88 cents to 14.99, Guild Pack down $1.29 to 22 5 So this card has been losing a lot of value, really, for a number of months now. Ever since Hogak, as well as Faithless Looting, were banned in Modern, this card became less critical in that format. Another reason these cards have been soft is because it has been reprinted as a rare in Corsa 2020, a lot of those cards are in circulation right now. And sure, it's standard legal, but it's not seeing a ton of standard play, a little bit here or there. It is still a great sideboard card, though, which you're going to find in Modern, Legacy, and Vintage. Put it all together, I do think this still loses a little more value before it stabilizes, but I do think we're getting closer to its price point going forward for a while. Number three is Questing Beast, down 230 to 2250, another green card losing value in standard due to the bannings this week. And this is still going to see standard play for sure, maybe not as much as it was seeing. And beyond that, it's going to continue to see Pioneer play, and even seems like a card that could continue to be decent and modern, perhaps, too. So keep an eye on this one. I do think it's going to lose more value before it stabilizes, but long term, this card does have potential. Number two is Arclight Phoenix, down 275 to 1575. This card has been very hot recently, really being driven because of Pioneer. When it comes to Standard, it sees a little play in a Phoenix decks. They're not that abundant, but once in a while, they can put up a good result. Pioneer, though, the Isa Phoenix decks have been looking pretty good recently, although I will say over the last week, percentage of play has been down a little bit. Maybe the results haven't been as strong as a lot of people anticipated, and that is why you're seeing the card go down a little right now. Remember, too, this was in the Arcane Tempo Challenger deck, so there are more copies of this card out there compared to other Mythic Rares from Guilds of Ravnica. We'll have to kind of see how Isa Phoenix plays out in Pioneer over the coming weeks. If it can rebound and put up a good result, this card will go back up. If it doesn't, it will continue to go down. Number one is Hydroid Crisis, down 371 to 2410, another card that's taking a hit financially due to the bannings we saw this week. And I do think this will still see standard play. It's a very powerful card. But overall, the standard meta feels like it's moving more towards Jun colors now and away from the Simic combination. So because of that, stands to reason this will see less play and could lose more value. However, don't forget about Pioneer. This card does have potential there. Has it done a whole lot so far? Not really. For the most part, the biggest contribution it has seen, at least recently, has been the Banfield of the Dead decks. Maybe about 30% of the time you find one copy of this in the main, but that could change going forward, or it could show up in a different deck. So I do think its price point is going to be very dependent on what happens in Pioneer in the coming weeks. If it doesn't start to see more play there, then this could lose a fair amount of value. Okay, there are big changes going on in the standard format, so today we're going to look at the top nine standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number 9 is Rankle Master of Pranks of $0.52 cents to $9. And this is a very good indication of what's happening now in this new standard meta. 
Players are moving away from Simic and Bant colors. We're starting to see some of the Rakdos decks doing better, Gruul decks doing better, Jun decks doing better. This is something you're going to find in Rakdos Aristocrats. Also in Pioneer, this is found in Mono Black Aggro, and that deck has been very strong recently there. Number eight, two copies of Overgrown 2 make the list today. Ravnica City of Guilds of 71 cents to 16.94, Return to Ravnica of 78 cents to 10.90. Keep an eye on these versions of the cards that are a little bit older. Granted, the more current version of this card is not moving this week all that much. But the older copies are a little bit harder to find in good condition. And sometimes when they begin to move, they are indicators that things are happening in the market. And maybe the newer copy of the card could be moving soon, too. So why is this one moving? Well, Jund Aristocrats right now has a lot of momentum behind it when it comes to standard. I mentioned earlier in the video, it's still got to put up the results, but right now there's a lot of positive buzz around that build, and this is part of the mana base there. Also in Pioneer, you're going to find this in Hardened Scales, which has been doing pretty well. Modern, of course, this is a big mana base card. You're going to find this in Salty Death Shadow, Crabvine, Jund, and more there. Number seven is Blood Crypt, another Shockland, but this time it is the newer printing from Ravnica Allegiance. It goes up 79 cents to 14.92. We've been saying, of course, everything is shifting in standard. Rakdos Aristocrats plays this, Jund Aristocrats plays this, and even Rakdos Knights could be a contender and will definitely be a better deck than it was just a week ago. Other than that, you're going to find this in some Pioneer builds like Rakdos Aggro. That one's doing pretty well right now. In Modern, Death Shadow builds will run this, Jund, Dredge, and more. Number six, Castle Lock Twain goes up $1.18 to $3.50. And yet another card that could benefit financially from the changes in the standard format. You're going to find this in things like Rakdos Aristocrats, Rakdos Knights, Jund Aristocrats, and more in that format. Pioneer, this is in some very good decks right now too. Mono Black Aggro, Mono Black Vampires, and more there. This is also seeing modern play too. Number five is a blue card, still going up in value though. Brazen Borrower, up $1.54 to $17. And it's just because this card has been so hot, especially in Pioneer recently. In standard, Azorius control decks do look better post-banning, so it will see more play there, I have no doubt. But if you go over to Pioneer, you'll see this in Is It Phoenix, Azorius Tempo, and more decks there. In modern, even, this is showing up in Merfolk, Is It Control, and other places. Legacy, Is It Spells has played this, Grixis, Dreadhorde, Delver, Jeskai Mentor. The card is kind of showing up everywhere. Number four is Teferi Time Raveler, up $1.76 to twenty one fifty three. So another card that I do think is going to play better in this new standard. Jeskai Fires builds seem like they're going to be very strong. You're going to find that card there. Also, like I just mentioned, Azorius Control decks feel like they're going to be better too. Pioneer, Bant Field of the Dead. Had a very good weekend last weekend. This is part of that deck too. Azorius Tempo and Control builds also doing very well in the Pioneer format. You're going to find Teferi there as well. Modern, the Seas Plane, Azorius Control, Devoted Devastation, and more. Yeah, I do think Little Teferi could be going up in value a little bit more before he stabilizes. Number three is Hollowed Fountain. The original from Dissension goes up to a 4 to 28.10 this week. And this card has been soft recently, so maybe this is normalization to some degree. But remember, this is part of the mana base for the Bant Field of the Dead deck in Pioneer, and that looked pretty good this weekend at the Star City Games Invitational. Also, this is a key mana base card not only in Pioneer, but Standard and Modern as well. Number two, similar story here with Breeding Pool from Dissension up 366 to 2933. This is also going to be found in that Pioneer Band Field of the Dead deck and still a big part of mana bases generally for Standard, Pioneer, and other formats. Even with the bannings of Oko, Vale of Summer, Once Upon a Time, This Week in Standard, this card still goes up quite a bit. Number one, Corvold Fate Curse King goes up 1056 to 2275. Wow. Okay, so first off, this is the non-foil version we're looking at today, the one you might find in a collector's booster pack as opposed to the foil copy you would find in a Brawl deck. But why is this going up so dramatically? Because it's actually seeing some standard play in a potentially very strong deck, that Jund Aristocrats deck. Now, not every version of the deck is running this, but many are, sometimes all the way up to three copies I've seen. So because of that, this card, which you're not going to find in regular booster packs of Throne of Train. Spikes pretty strongly this week. Not to mention, this is also a very popular Brawl and Commander card right now. Okay, let's move on to Pioneer with the top five Pioneer legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number five, there he is, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, down $1.72 to $31.54. This card is seeing Pioneer play. It actually looks pretty good in Azorius Tempo and Control Builds and other places. Also, this is still showing up in Modern Control Builds and hasn't changed. 
but because of the big spike that this card underwent when the Pioneer format was announced, it is still trending down, and I do think it is going to trend down a little more before it does stabilize finally. Number four is Dragonlord Ojitai down $1.74 to $9.99. This has been reprinted in Mystery Boosters, but that is not the only reason it's soft. This is another card that saw a lot of hype, especially when people thought Azori's Control or Tempo decks could do well in Pioneer. This card did start to spike relatively aggressively. Since then, though, it hasn't really been doing much. I have seen people trying to work these into those decks, but for the most part, the ones putting up the big results aren't running this. I think this might lose a lot of value in the next few weeks. Number three is Nissa Voice of Zendikar, another card that spiked recently, so this is partially normalization, going down 218 to 1533. This also is one of the cards reprinted in Mystery Boosters. You'll find this in Hardened Scales, but that deck did cool off a little bit this week. It still seems like it's pretty good in Pioneer, but there was a lot more buzz around it maybe two weeks ago. Slesnia Token is not a wildly popular deck, but sometimes it can do well, and it does run this too. Legacy, you'll find this in Infect Builds. I do think this is going to lose some more value, though, again, before it does stabilize. Number two, Once Upon a Time, down 234 to 1499. Obviously, we've been talking all video about the bannings. This card was banned in standard, which is why it's losing value like this. But remember, this is still a key card in Pioneer right now. You're going to find this in Mono Green Devotion, Greenfield Ramp. Also in Modern, Amulet Titan will run this, Saltai Death Shadow, Crab Vine. In fact, Devoted Druid builds, Legacy Golgari Depths. Even if this thing ends up getting banned in, say, Pioneer, the play that it sees in Modern could keep the value of this card relatively high. It's a rare, not a mythic from the newest set, so there's a lot of copies out there. You do have to take that into account. But over time, I do think this could be a card that holds value in the long term. Number one is Jace Wren's Prodigy, down 274 to $45. This one's kind of interesting because as soon as the Pioneer format was announced, this card spiked dramatically. A lot of people remember that it was good in Frontier, and also when it was in Standard, it was fantastic. However, since then, it hasn't really done a whole lot. I have seen people trying to work these into control builds or tempo builds in Pioneer here or there, but again, it feels like the decks that are rising to the top are just not running this card right now. I do feel like this is going to lose a lot more value in the coming weeks unless something changes. Okay, let's move on to the top 15 Pioneer legal cards that have gained value this week. Again, another huge week for Pioneer. Like I mentioned at the top of the video, we got to see this played for the first time in a really big tournament, the Star City Games Invitational. So that did start to shape people's opinions of different decks and different cards. So let's see what's going on. Number 15, Gideon Ally of Zendikar, up $1.23 to 1830. This is in Azorius Tempo. Sometimes Azorius Control decks too in the Pioneer format. Also, sometimes you'll find this in Banned Spirits. It sees some modern play and even sometimes a little legacy play. And recently, it's been more popular in Commander because of Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale. A lot of players are trying to put together the Knight builds, and this is great for those type of decks. Number 14, and Soul Artifact goes up $1.28 to $2.66, and this is going up even with a reprinting in Mystery Boosters. Other than that, not a lot to say about this one. The Insol Artifact decks have been good really ever since Pioneer started, and they continue to be solid. Number 13 is Pithing Needle. This is the one for Magic 2010. It goes up $1.28 to $8.99. Great sideboard card in Pioneer, Modern, Legacy, and Vintage. Number 12 is Sphinx's Revelation. This is the one from the Ravnica Allegiance Azorius Guild Kit. It goes up $1.37 to $10.29. This is actually seeing a fair amount of play in Pioneer now. You'll find this in Banfield of the Dead as well as the Azorius Control builds. Number 11, Hour of Promise, up $1.47 to $3.99. And you guessed it, another card that you're going to find in Banfield of the Dead. There's also other variations of that deck that run this card that are doing pretty well in the format. Probably the second biggest one is Greenfield Ramp. Also, you'll find this in modern Titan Shift decks, which have been very good recently, too. Number 10, Kalidas Trader of Get, big pioneer card up $1.53 to $3.99. You'll find this in Mono Black Aggro, Mono Black Vampire, Salt High Control, and more. Also, good modern cards. He's playing the Rock, Four Color Snow Control, and other decks there, too. Number 9, Blood Soaked Champion goes up $217 to $303. Another card you'll find in Mono Black Aggro as well as Rakdos Aggro. And this has seen increased play in Commander recently, too, with Ayara, First of Lock Thwain, and Corvald Fake Chris King builds. Number 8 is Thoughtseize. It's the one from Lorwyn going up this week, 220 to 4180. The other two are relatively flat, moving up just a little bit. But the harder-to-find copy, the Lorwyn copy, still going up quite a bit. So, why is this so hot? Pioneer. More players just want play sets of this card, and yes, it's in a pretty big deck right now, the Mono Black Aggro deck and others. 
Beyond that, this is a modern staple. You see this everywhere in the modern format. A lot of big decks are playing it, like Saltai Artifacts, Death Shadow Builds, Crab Vine, Jund, Four Color Wurza, Mono Black Aggro, and more. Sees Legacy play as well. Number seven, Archangel Avacyn goes up 234 to 999. This card has been hot now for a couple weeks. Again, moving mostly because of Pioneer. You're going to find this in Azorius Tempo builds, among other places there. And this has seen a little bit of increased commander play recently, too, with the release of Kalia Zenith Seeker. Number six, Is It Charm? This is the one from the Guilds of Ravnica. Is it Guild Kit? It goes up 254 to 547. Last week, we saw all the copies of this card spiking. The others are starting to settle down a little bit, but this one, which is a little harder to find, continues to go up. And again, this is moving because of the Is It Phoenix deck, although, like I said earlier in the video, that deck has cooled off a little bit compared to last week. Number five, Nicol Bolas the Ravager, up 291 to 1899. This card is beginning to gain a little pioneer momentum, showing up in different Grixis control builds and even Grixis midrange builds. Number four, this one's a big one, Supreme Verdict, Iconic Masters going up 297 to 1577, Return to Ravnica going up 483 to 1729. This is another example where a reprinting in Mystery Boosters does not outweigh high demand. This card has been pretty hot because it looks good in the Azorius Control decks and Azorius Tempo decks that we're seeing right now in the Pioneer format. But this week again, yet another card that has been pushed by the Battlefield of the Dead build too. On top of that, this sees a lot of modern play, some legacy play, and it's a huge commander card. Number three is Mutavault. Magic 2014 goes up 384 to 1999. Warning tied up 744 to 2444. This is a card that has really taken off because of its play in Pioneer. You'll find this in a variety of different decks. Mono Black Aggro is always Control. Is it in Soul? Mono Black Vampires. This sees modern play too. And also many times you'll find this in Commander Tribal builds. Number two, Oko, Thief of Crowns, what? Goes up 1149 to 4399. That's correct, a card that got banned in standard this week, jumping up more than $10. Why is this? Okay, first thing you gotta take into account. The standard banning was pretty well telegraphed by Wizards. Most people believed at least about two or three weeks ahead of time that this was gonna get banned in standard last Monday, and it did. The price drops had already been occurring. Remember, they also announced the Brawl banning the previous week. So the big question that was left was where else could it get banned? Will it get banned in Pioneer or Modern, Restricted and Vintage? What else were they going to do? Well, they didn't do anything else to this card. When that news got out, people decided to go ahead and buy copies, and that's what you're seeing here. On top of that, here's a card now that's going to be very good in Pioneer, again, if it doesn't get banned at some point down the road. But right now, you're going to find this in Banfield of the Dead and other places there. Modern, though, this is seeing a ton of play. Saltai Artifacts, Amulet Titan, Saltai Death Shadow. Four Color Wurza, also the Simic variety of that deck, Infect, Devoted Devastation, and more. And of course, this sees play in Commander and a whole bunch of other places, basically wherever it's legal right now, everywhere except Standard and Brawl. So yes, definitely keep an eye on this card. We'll have to kind of see what happens in the future. Could more bannings be coming down the road? Perhaps, and that would definitely affect its value. But I think for the long term, this is always going to be a sought-after card, and it's going to be difficult for Wizards to reprint this thing. They obviously are not going to reprint this in a standard set in the future. It will be in some supplemental product, but who knows when that's going to be. Number one is Shiv and Reef. This goes up $19.57 to $25, but this is the original one from Apocalypse. Now, sure, this card is more sought after because of the Pioneer format. Is it Phoenix will run this? Actually, both types, the regular Arclight Phoenix version as well as the multiple Phoenixes version. Is it in Soul runs this? Teamer Infinite Possibilities, which is kind of an interesting new deck, which runs Enter the Infinite and Possibility Storm. So there's definitely more of a demand on this card compared to a few weeks ago. With that being said, though, this is a weird jump. This original copy dried up in the marketplace very quickly. Could have been a buyout or at least somewhat bought out. And the newer versions of the card are moving up, but nowhere near to this degree. Okay, let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week as we move to the modern format. And I will tell you, modern continues to be pretty quiet. And I do think the main reason for that, and the same reason that actually legacy and vintage cards, I think, are pretty quiet, a lot of people are just focused on Pioneer. I mean, people only have so much money to spend, right? So because of that, modern has been slow. I don't think that means the modern format's dying or anything like that. The one thing modern has over legacy and vintage is they do not have to deal with the reserve list. So if wizards can get those reprints coming over time to make sure that the key cards are at least somewhat affordable to 
even a medium-sized audience, I think modern is going to be just fine. But let's see what's going on this week. Number five is surgical extraction. New Phyrexia down $299 to $30. Modern Masters 2015 down $346 to $3174. A card that is still stabilizing since the Hogak and Faithless Looting bans in Modern. This card was very critical before those cards got banned. Still a very good card coming out of sideboards in Modern as well as Legacy, but not as critical in the Modern format as it once was. Number four is Chalice of the Void. This is the one for Modern Masters. It goes down $348 to $60.55. With the recent modern meta changes, this card is still trying to find its price point. The percentage of play overall is down, but it's still in some pretty big decks. You're going to find this in Eldrazi builds, Merfolk, and more in the format. Sees Legacy and Vintage play too. Number three is Sliver of Legion, down 358 to 8413. This is more of a commander card than a modern card, but this card had a ton of hype around it with the Modern Horizons release, bringing us the first Sliver and some other new Slivers. Commander players were building around Slivers like crazy. This is starting to calm down a little bit, at least. Number two, Black Cleave Cliffs, down 403 to 6440. Another card that's still finding its price point after the meta changes that have been occurring since the banning of Faithless Looting and Hogak. So with that being said, sure, you're going to find this in big decks like Jun still, but still trying to find its price point as it continues to go down in value this week. Number one, Ren and Six, goes down 1068 to 6440. Okay. So this got banned in Legacy this week, which is why it's so soft right now. Still sees modern play, obviously. Juns, Rainbow Niv, Mizzet, and more there. And also you find this in Vintage. But Legacy was kind of the bread and butter for this card, and also considering the amount of copies that are in circulation right now. Because Modern Horizons is still readily available for the most part at a decent price, I do think this is going to lose more value before it stabilizes. Okay, on to the top six modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Again, you're not going to see a lot of gains here, like I mentioned a few moments ago. Modern is pretty quiet. I think people are also a little worried about buying into the more expensive cards because we know there's going to be 121 more reprints coming in the store mystery packs, and they're going to be in foil. It sounds like potentially those could be pretty sought-after cards, which could mean a lot of modern staples. It's just got the market very soft right now, all things considered. So you will notice a lot of the cards we're going to talk about today are more commander cards than modern cards again. Number six is a card that sees modern play, though. It's Cavern of Souls from Modern Masters 2017. It goes up $1.05 to 6586. You'll find this in Eldrazi builds, Amulet Titan, Humans, Merfolk, and more. Sees Legacy play, too. And, of course, this sees commander play in tribal builds. And this has been pushed recently with some new tribal synergies that have come out. Number five, there's our Jace the Mind Sculptor for the week. This is the one from Eternal Masters going up $1.40 to one nineteen ninety nine. Like I've been saying, these are just trying to find their price points after all the changes in the modern meta especially. Still sees playing modern control builds and stone blame builds. He's playing legacy control and sneak and show. This is just an iconic card. It's always going to be expensive, but it does feel like it's trying to settle in around the 120 125 mark, at least for a copy like this. The worldwide copies typically cost a little more. Number four, everybody's favorite commander card from Fifth Dawn, Vidalcan Orrery. This goes up $1.62 to $30.69. Huge commander staple here. Doesn't see a whole lot of modern play or anything like that, but it does climb this week. Number three, another big commander card, Doubling Season. This goes up $1.66 to $55.77. This is the one from Ravnica City of Guilds. And this has seen maybe a little bit of increased play recently because of the Primal Genesis Commander 2019 deck. I was a little surprised this card didn't go up more when that deck originally came out, but now maybe the demand is catching up with it. Number two is a different copy of Chalice of the Void. This is the one from Mirrodin, though. This goes up 247 to 6102 this week. And number one is Vivid Marsh from Commander going up 251 to 420. Now, this has shown up on the Market Watch for two weeks in a row. Kind of weird, right? This is a fine Commander card. It's been reprinted many times. And yeah, some of the supplemental products, especially the older ones, they are drying up in the marketplace, which could be part of the reason this is going up this much. But it also does feel like it might be kind of a strange buyout, too. Okay, on to the Vintage Spotlight. And this is where we talk about cards that see play in Vintage, Legacy, 9394, or cards that are just popular among collectors. And like I said last week, you're going to see the Vintage market generally is very, very slow right now. There's a lot of recession, actually. Keep a close eye on prices for maybe some of the older cards that you've been interested in. Because there might come a time pretty soon where you might want to pull the trigger. Prices are definitely getting lower. So why is that happening? I do think partially it has to do with the Star City Games announcement a couple weeks back that they're going to phase Legacy out of their big tournaments because now they have Pioneer as an option. 
Collectors are always going to appreciate rare cards though, no matter what. So let's see what's going on this week. You will notice though, most of the cards going up in value are actually cards that see a fair amount of play, as opposed to cards that are just getting harder to find. Mana Vault is our first one. This is the one from Ultimate Masters. It goes up $1.09 to thirty six forty three. Great vintage card, great commander card. Force of Will, this is the one from Eternal Masters. It goes up $1.18 to one eighteen seventy four. Great legacy card, great vintage card, and it's a big commander card too. Winds of Change from Portal goes up $1.36 to $17.36. So this is another case of a card that sure it sees Legacy and Commander play to some degree, but I do think this one is drying up a little bit in the marketplace because those Portal cards are getting harder and harder to find in good condition. Lion's Eye Diamond from Mirage. This goes up $241 to $200. Of course, this is on the reserve list. And this does see Legacy play in Ad Nauseam Tendrils, Dredge, and more. Also sees Vintage play in Dark Petition Storm, and has seen increased Commander play recently with the release of Emery Lurker of the Lock. Yogmoth's Will from Urza Saga, also on the reserve list, but they did make a Judge promo copy of this card before they closed that loophole in the reserve list. This goes up 268 to 7348. You'll find this in Vintage, Dark Petition Storm builds, and more there. Also, this has seen more Commander play recently with the release of Carrick Son of Yogmoth. Another reserve list card here with Tropical Island from Revised. It goes up 310 to 298.50. A lot of the other Revised Dual Lands are softer this week, but this one continues to go up. Mountain. Okay, so this is one of those weird ones. This is from Magic Anthologies, and it was kind of reprinting the Arabian Nights Mountain. Of course, the biggest difference being the white border you see here. Still a hard card to find, though, in good condition, and it does go up 510 to 2470 this week. Mox Diamond from Stronghold goes up 525 to 279.37. This is on the reserve list, but they did make a foil copy of this card in front of the Vault Relics, again, before they changed the reserve list rules around that. And you'll find this in Legacy Depths builds and Lands decks, also a very big commander card. Word of Command from Unlimited. Unlimited cards generally have been hot recently, not so much over the last couple weeks, but there's still a few climbing. This particular one is on the reserve list. It goes up $14.78 to $139.95 this week. Royal Assassin from Unlimited goes up $26.41 to $79.99. Mox Ruby from Unlimited, of course, on the reserve list. It goes up $275 to $3,074.98. And Mox Pearl, also on the reserve list from Unlimited, goes up $424.98 to $3,249.95. Okay, onto the Commander Spotlight. So, this is again another light week for the Commander Spotlight, although. Again, like last week, a lot of the cards that are moving, at least in part because of Commander, we have already covered in other parts of the video. But I do think Commander is slow, too, not only because a lot of people are focused on Pioneer, but because Wizards has announced a number of Commander-centric products for next year, and it looks like we're going to get a lot of reprints. Because of that, again, people are a little shy about buying into some of the bigger cards. Most recently, the mystery packs, at least the convention versions of those, have also brought some reprints out that a lot of people really wanted, like Bloom Tender, Teferi's Protection, stuff like that. So I do think people are kind of waiting to see what's going to happen a little. Okay, I threw Smuggler's Copter on this list because it didn't quite make the Pioneer list, but really this is moving more so because of Pioneer. It goes up $1.11 to $10.14. So you're going to find this in Mono Black Aggro, Mono Red Aggro, Azorius Tempo, is it in Soul, and much more there. It sees a little modern play too, but yes, it does see Commander play as well. And it has seen a little more Commander play recently because of Gerard Weatherlight Hero. Mana Drain, this goes up $1.11 to $82.99. This is the one from Iconic Masters. You know, not too long ago, I would have just thrown this in the vintage section, but honestly, it doesn't see a whole lot of vintage play anymore. It's really more of a commander card than anything nowadays. Sylvan Tudor, another portal card here. It goes up $1.61 to fifty four forty one, getting harder and harder to find in good condition, and tutors are always critical in commander. Jet Medallion, this is the original one from Tempest, goes up $222 to nineteen thirty four. This card took off recently as a lot of people were trying to build those Carrick Son of Yogmoth decks. But just in general, this is a solid card to have. The whole medallion cycle is great for Commander. Okay, onto the Pauper Spotlight. Just one card today, Spell Stutter Sprite from Modern Masters. It goes up 19 cents to 268. You're gonna find this in Scred Fairies and more in the format. It's also a good Commander card too, where more people are trying to pick it up because of Alila Artful Provocateur. Okay, onto our premium spotlight. As you know, if you watch these videos, I don't like to spend too much time on foils or promo cards that are rare, because if you go online, if there's not a lot of sales of a given card at any time, 
you don't get the best data, and sometimes that data can be manipulated. However, I do like to show at least one card that feels like it's moving with the marketplace, and I thought this one was kind of interesting. It's Oko, Thief of Crowns, everybody's favorite card. But remember, nowadays there's so many different variants of cards that they produce, it makes me wonder how value is going to be affected long term. So let's look at what this card did this week. The borderless copy of the card went up $7.12 to fifty-seven forty-eight. The promo pack foil, that's the promo packs that you would find at your game store. And on those cards, they have the special magic emblem on them. That goes up ten fifty to eighty five oh nine this week. The borderless foil, being the big chase card, goes up thirty four forty two to one forty three eighty six. Here's the other three kind of weird variations of the card. The regular non foil promo pack only goes up sixty seven cents to forty four fourteen. The pre release promo goes up four fifty nine to fifty nine ninety two. Of course, that is a foil. And the regular foil goes up six sixty one to fifty nine ninety four. It will be kind of interesting to follow all these different variations of the cards over time and just kind of see what happens. All right, with that being said, that's the Market Watch for this week. Until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.